All right, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to see all of you. My name is Ronnie, and this is my wife, Shamar. Uh, we're excited to be here. I'm saying that because some of you were not here last night. Raise your hand if you were not here last night. No? Oh, I'm sorry, keep your hands raised. All right. Ushers, if you guys can. Um, all right, we'll, we'll, try to, we'll try to catch you guys up because uh, just jumping into what we're talking about today might, it might be a little whiplash uh, that comes with that. So, but before we uh, continue, I, I really want to uh, thank uh, Perry and Nikki uh, and the elders uh, for allowing us to do this. I mean, last night we got a lot of encouragement, a lot of thanks from you guys. And uh, in my mind, I'm like, this, please, I mean, we're, we're fine with the, the encouragement, but please extend that towards Perry and Nikki, uh, just for them uh, really wanting to do this, wanting us to talk about these very things, uh, as well as the, uh, the elders. You guys have uh, spiritual leaders. And um, so if you can please just show them some appreciation now. <laughs> All right, so today we're going to hit two topics. Uh, last night was about opening your eyes, opening our eyes, uh, and uh, we'll get a, a quick recap in just a second. Today we'll talk about opening our minds, uh, and then last but not least, opening our ears. And opening our ears uh, is just about what we need to do. Uh, how we need to position ourselves to hear from the Spirit and recognize the Spirit's voice. Uh, open your mind. You know, we're just going to look at some scriptures. We're going to do a lot of scripture reading today. Uh, so um, please pull out your Bibles. Uh, be ready to read. Um, you know, you need some tea or something like that to project more. Get some tea. But uh, we'll, we'll have we'll, we'll have some uh, people read some scriptures. Uh, we'll read those together. Uh, but let's start with a recap, all right? So uh, to help those that are here that are just coming into this conversation, uh, how, could, how could we bring them up to speed? But let's have some volunteers. What's a, a, a summation of what we talked about yesterday? In a few words, or just at least what you got from yesterday. Listening to the Spirit. All right, the importance of listening to the Spirit, all right? I might just call on some people. Yeah. See the spiritual world around us. Okay. Open our eyes to the spiritual world around us. All right. Mm -hmm. Opening our eyes to the spiritual world around us. Yes. Uh, um, believing in the Holy Spirit, even though it might seem weird. Right. Okay. <laughs> believing in the Holy Spirit, or at least the outward manifestations of the Holy Spirit, even though it might seem weird. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll get on. We'll we'll talk a little bit about that today. Yes. Right, right. Theme passage in 2 Corinthians 13, where Paul says to the church, uh, may the grace of the Lord Jesus, may the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And uh, how the spirit that Jesus promised us is relational. That there is a give and take, there's a, there's a converse, conversational, you know, guiding relationship that we are to have with the Holy Spirit. You have your hand raised, bro? I was going to say having a deeper relationship with the Spirit enriches our life. Yes. Being attentive to the yes. Spirit and yes. not oblivious to the Spirit as sometimes you can be. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. The importance, yes, how much we need uh, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Right. Um, how even if you've been going for a while and doing well, it doesn't mean that you don't have the Spirit, but there's so much more that God has for you. Yes. Um, in Second Kings, um, we talk about how God sent the Holy Spirit for us to enjoy something we love to burn out. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. That's a big one. That is a big one. Uh, not getting burned out. One more. Yes, ma'am. Actually listening to the Spirit and following God. Yes. Yes. Amen. So let's start Genesis chapter uh, 3, 
We'll just look at one passage just kind of uh, as a recap. Um, <clears throat> Genesis chapter 3, verse, we'll start in verse 13. So Genesis 3, this is the fall of man. Uh, we're familiar with this passage. Uh, you know, Adam and Eve, they eat the forbidden fruits. And, um, you know, they're running, they're hiding from God because they're, they're naked. God's like, who told you you were naked? And if I can have someone read verse 13 and verse 14. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord gave, so the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. Okay, all right. So, who was to blame? No, as you look at those words, let's look at them, you know, you can look over it again. It, it, the it, there, there might be more than one answer, but... <laughs> Yeah. All right. Okay. Because he does ask her, what is it you have done? Right? He says that to who? The woman. Said that to the woman. But who's the first one to get cursed? The serpent. The serpent. He's the first one. Um, God says, because you have done this. And that, that goes to what we were talking about yesterday, just how we have to open our eyes to the spiritual realm that is around us. We have to open our eyes and see, like Jesus did with Peter, that uh, when something is said that's out of line, you know, Jesus, he said, you know, get behind me, Satan. Yeah. All right. So we have to open our eyes that there is a spiritual world around us. It doesn't mean that we blame everything on an evil spirit or, or you know, it, it doesn't mean that we turn into people that are just always seeing that, but it is around us and we've got to open our eyes. There are things that are happening in our country. There's things that people do. You know, you think, you think about Dylan Roof. We think about different things that have happened, evils that have happened. And, you know, um, we live in a time where it's easy for us to disassociate the spiritual realm with those actions. But that's that's not how we should live. That's not how Jesus lived. So we've got to open our eyes to that. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're going to talk about what it means to open our mind. All right. Open our mind. And Shamar has uh, something to share. Yes, I have um, a Facebook post to share. I know you guys love Facebook. <laughs> um, no, a friend of mine posted this on, on, on Facebook a couple of weeks ago. He says, the phrase, God led me or God told me, should be used sparingly and with great care. Mm -hmm. So it was just his post. And of course, you know, all types of different people are chiming in and, and saying, yes, you know, thank you for saying that. But there's one guy that, that chimed in, and he said, yes, this is true. Since no one is inspired today, inspired is in quotes, in the sense that the apostles were, one could never really say that they are God-led what you do. And obviously, God does not speak audibly to anyone except to people in those hospitals. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So, yes. So this was an interesting post. Uh, Veronica actually um, came up to me last night and she was saying, she's like, you know, I've actually taught this. And I have too. I taught this all the time. I, I, I would tell people, well, you know, God doesn't speak anymore. There's no more inspiration in any of the apostles. So that's the end of that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. So we just want to address that mindset. I mean, can anybody relate to what that person, that person's reply? Can you relate to yeah. feeling that way, even teaching that? I know that I can. All right. And uh, so we just want to we want to talk about that.
because uh, that, you know, we, we ended last night talking about the things that we have to fight in order to open our eyes. Uh, the things, you know, some of the Western mindset, some of the other things that say God used to do those things. <clears throat> now truth is within us and all we have to do is just train our minds to reason yeah. to discover all truth. When the scriptures say that the spirit is there to lead us to all truth. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it was, you know, it was kind of sarcastic in saying that. The only people that would hear audibly from God would be people that have illness. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So uh, we want to read through the book of Acts, a couple of passages in the book of Acts. All right. It's to open our minds. Uh, so if I can have some volunteers, um, let's see. Someone can read, someone can get ready to read Acts 8, verse. 26 to verse 29. Can I have a volunteer for that? Uh, yes. Is it your name, Justin? Justin. All right. Awesome. If we can have someone read Acts 9, verse 10 through 19. We'll have a, a Brother Barry here. You feel like you guys will be able to hear it there? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> if we can also have someone read Acts 10, I'm sorry, what did I just do? 19. 19. 19. 19. All right, so someone Acts 10, 1 through 8. Uh, yes, I um, uh, if we can have someone read Acts 10, 9 through 23. Yes, you you put in work over there, Warren. And then, uh, Brett, if you could read at, uh, Mark 16, verse 15 through 20. <coughs> All right. So as we, as we read these passages together, um, if you can keep an eye out for the different ways, the different channels, that God uses to communicate with people, to communicate with the disciples on this side of the resurrection. Amen? Yes, you have your hand. Mark 16, verse 15 through 20. All right. Okay, so first up, Acts 8, verse 26. Now, the angel of the Lord said to him, Go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way, he met the Ethiopian Enoch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kandit, which means queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home, was sitting on the chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told the pillar, Go to that chariot and stay near it. All right. We, we know what happens after after that, right? Okay, so what, what are some channels that we see God speaking through in this passage? The Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Say again. The angel, right? What does it say? An angel of the Lord spoke to Philip. All right. So the baton, who passes the baton first, sir? It's the angel of the Lord, right? And, or excuse me, an angel of the Lord. Uh, and then once he gets there, what's the, what's the next channel that's used? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, all right? It says that the Spirit told Philip to go stand by that chariot. And then we know what happens from there, right? Okay. He meets, you know, he hears him reading, um, and then soon after he's baptized. All right, next up, Acts chapter 9, verse 10, verse 10 through 19. Who's got that? All right. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street, Ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. 
In a vision, he seen a man named Ananias come and placed his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I've heard many reports about this man and all the harm he's done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he's come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all those who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, go. This man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. <laughs> Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see it again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see. He got up and was baptized, and after he <coughs> some food, he regained his strength. Amen. All right. So what, what, what are some of the channels we're seeing here? A vision. A vision. vision. All right. Jesus. Lord Jesus speaking. All right. Yes. So uh, who was speaking in the vision? Jesus. Jesus. Right. One, one place it says the, the Lord. Uh, and then later he says the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Another channel would be somebody... And individual speaking somebody. Yes. All right. So we have the vision. We also have an individual uh, speaking. Uh, why? Why is that notable? Did I mean the Lord is speaking in visions here to how many people in this passage? Two. Two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He tells. He tells. Paul right. And I Right, right. So we see that Ananias has a vision, and then he tells him, where does he say? Uh, 11, 12. <laughs> said that Saul was praying, and he is seen in a vision. Okay? So we've got two people that are having visions. We've got a vision network going on here. All right? And um, so why, if God is speaking to people in visions, why do you think a person was needed to deliver more instruction? Ananias is also a channel speaking the word of God. But uh, why, why do you think that a person is needed? Yes. Well, it's kind of like when you were talking about yesterday, when you had, um, when you heard that, that voice in your head to slow down, tell your daughter to slow down. It's to um, confirm your belief, your belief in the Holy Spirit, your belief in God. Right. Really, your belief in the Holy Spirit that there is actually something there that is, that is, that is the Holy Spirit. So. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't say that he was waiting on another message, though. It says he's waiting on a hand. When does it say that? He's waiting on a hand. He yeah, sees a vision of a guy in verse twelve. Lays his hands on him. A man named Ananias. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's waiting on. He's waiting on the guy with a hand. <laughs> yeah. All right. So a human hand. We can add that <laughs> to the a channel in the working of the spirit. Uh, so again, the question, why do you think a person was needed? Yes? I don't think he was needed. I think God chooses to include us in his plan. I, I think it must have done something incredible to Ananias' faith to be included in something so amazing as that which God performed through him. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, God can do whatever he wants. Uh, but he had a man come, and uh, our obedience is needed. Yeah. You know, I mean, someone needed to baptize him. Someone needed to baptize him. So there was going to be a name, there was going to be a person that was going to be asked. And like the example yesterday, and like the example that many of us have in our lives, we can hear the Spirit tell us to do something and not do it. You know, and we deal with the consequences of that. And you know, maybe somebody else 
you know, he'll talk to somebody else and see. Uh, but there are a number of reasons why there's a person involved and not just just God speaking in visions and it, it not including other people. Uh, and perhaps that is to confirm the word that was spoken. Um, any other channels that are that we can spot in here? Okay, all right, let's go to the next one. Uh, so Acts chapter 10, verse 1 through 8. Who has that? At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelia, a centurion who walked with him at the Italian regiment. He and all his family were devout and God fearing. He gave generously to those who need and prayed to God regularly. One day, at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelia. Cornelia stared at him in fear. What did Lord he ask? The angel answered, Your prayers and gifts to the poor come up as a memorial offering before God. Now send them to Joppa to bring them back to bring back a man named Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and the devout soldier, who was one of his attendants. He told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. Okay, all right. And then that's my read the next part. Yeah, verse 9 through 23. About noon of the following day, as they were on their journey of approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven open, something like a large sheet being let down to earth by four corners. It contained all kinds of four footed animals, as well as reptiles of the earth and birds of the air. Then the voice told him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Show them how to Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. Mm -hmm. This happened three times, and immediately the sheep were taken back to heaven. While Peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision, the men sent by the leaders found out what Simon's house was and found at the gate. They called out and asked Simon who was going to see what Sam said. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you. So get up and go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. Peter went down and said to the men, I am the one you're looking for, why have you come? The men replied, We have come from Cornelius the Centurion, and he is a righteous, God fearing man, who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to have you come to his house so that he could hear what he had to say. Then Peter invited the men to his house to be his guest. The next day, Peter started out with them, and some of the brothers from Joppa went along. Okay. All right. So uh, what happens later is this whole household uh, becomes Christians. The Holy Spirit comes on them just like they, it's basically a, a day of Pentecost for the Gentiles. Uh, it's an amazing story here. So uh, what, what do we see happening here? What, what, what stands out to you regarding uh, the way the Spirit spoke to people in this yeah. in this section. Yes. It just started one place and just kept reading it out and out. And mm -hmm. It made a difference to a lot of people because as you said the Gentiles that would have been inducted or in the welcome here. So it made an impact on a lot of people from that little reading of the spirit from one person to another to another. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh feminist. Calling some cool. Uh, so, what's what's important with both uh, both of these remarks that I talked about yesterday is Lord speaking to someone who didn't know anything about their life with a voice mm -hmm. was that scary by itself. But then you don't even know who God is. You don't you don't even have a relationship with Jesus at this point. He didn't you know he didn't know who Jesus. So the Spirit wasn't you know it chose him uh, as somewhat random I guess you'd say. Mm -hmm. Now, which him are you talking about? The, the, the centurion. centurion. Yeah. Now, it says that he was God-fearing. Um, I'm not sure uh, just his connection to Jesus. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's some visitations happening here. 
Yeah. <clears throat> Just to your point, um, I think it's important to see that God, that the Spirit can speak to people that may not be in relationship with Him. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't know how, how many of you, before you were a disciple, mm -hmm. if you ever talked to God or spoke to God or prayed to God, when I was living in the depths, depths, depths of my sin, I prayed all the time. And God would answer me. He would send people to me, or I would ask him for things, and he would send me the things I prayed for. And this is as a total non Christian. And this is very convicting. Because sometimes when we're talking to people and trying to bring them the word, the spirit may be speaking to them, but we don't feel like they're ready for that connection. They might even say, well, you know, I feel like God is <laughs> telling me to do this. And be like, no, he's not speaking to you. <laughs> but he may, he may be. So I think that's a great point. Yeah, yeah. Did you have your hand raised? <laughs> I, I, I mean, it's a scripture, I think, where you talk about the spirit in terms of hearing and also seeing. So you talk about the vision and you talk about the glory. Right. So you never know how the spirit is going to manifest itself. So sometimes it may be in that vision for others, it may be in a voice to others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When does uh, Peter get this vision? What is he doing? What what kind of state is he in when he gets it? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> He was in a trance. All right. He was he was hungry. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it might be some hints that he's doing a uh, a morning fast type thing. Uh, but but he's he's hungry. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, anything else you want to say? Something? Mm -hmm. refer to it the same voice. Right, right. Yeah, so we, we see, you know, we see a number of channels here, including people, yeah. right? Including people that are able to confirm. You know, I mean, it, it was confirmed to the, the, was it three guys that, that set out from, was it three guys or two? I'm, I'm, or does it say? I don't know. But it was confirmed to those that were sent, you know, to go find Peter uh, while they're on the way or right as they're at the gate. The Spirit's like, by the way, there's some people here to see you on this matter. Um, there's, there's a number of things that are happening. Yes. This might sound crazy, but even though hey, we're we're in a we're in a crazy environment today. What what's crazy today? Um, but even though these these accounts are one came before the other, I think it's quite plausible they happen at the same time. Now, how does anyone have a com a different conversation with two people at the same time? Mm -hmm. Nobody does. God does. Yeah, bro. Listen, you, well, the examples that we gave yesterday. I mean, I like behind the scenes footage, you know, of movies and how they're made. What's the behind the scenes for the, the stories that we were telling yesterday? I mean, this is stuff beyond time and space. Okay, this is a spirit or an angel. I mean, as much as we're reading here and you're seeing angels are speaking to people, I, I believe likely the stories that we shared yesterday, we were hearing from angels. I think that there's a high percentage of that. But the idea that you are hearing about something that will happen in the future, uh, you know, regardless of your obedience or not, that something will, someone will be sitting with you or something is going to happen. That's, you know, that's a whole nother, that's just beyond time and space. And if we try to think about the behind the scenes that goes with that, I mean, it's just, it's just amazing what could have been happening. Yes. Well, because you said that, the reason Sandy said two things today is because God spoke to me. And a, and a number of people know my marriage story. Before I ever knew who this man was, we were in a bathroom together, we would get one wall out to the other. And when he spoke that we were at dinner, he said, introduce ourselves. 
I heard a voice say, you're going to marry that man. I had no clue who he was. Didn't know him. He was on the other side of the room. The birth man class. I'm not married to him. No, no. Mm-hmm. But it was weird. Because mm-hmm. I've never heard his voice before. I heard it a few times after. As a non-Christian, not anywhere near God. But that was, that was what happened. Mm-hmm. And so yesterday, last night, was very interesting for me. Mm-hmm. About Jesus. I didn't know that God was speaking to I, I, I wasn't an atheist, but I didn't know God. Right. Yeah. I, I feel that that is so loving of God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That He would speak to us when we're not being obedient. Mm-hmm. And it, it also should give us confidence, though, that being able to hear from God. It doesn't depend on you doing so great spiritually. Like it doesn't depend on you. It's just the grace of God and Him wanting you to know something. I think that's the love. I thought that now, then I thought I'm a figure in my mind. (laughs) (laughs) So now, now I'm you know, I matured. Right. It was scary. Right. Yes. Yes. So uh, let's take the weird label off of her. I mean, she might. She might do some things that are weird, <laughs> but you know, don't be afraid to share that. What What is the title of this session? Open your mind, right? This is what our prayer is. So hopefully, <laughs> our minds are opening up to the possibilities. Um, by the way, we are still <laughs> like we are. We're here to share what God has taught us. We are not experts in this at all. Uh, we're. I mean, we're, we're nowhere near uh, some of the things that we're seeing in these scriptures. I mean, there are people here. There, Peter, we see Ananias, like going back and forth with the spirit, like disputing stuff. Like, no, I'm. have you heard what the reports about this guy? You want me to go speak to him? Like, like uh, you know, we're, we're not there yet. <laughs> We hear one thing, we're just like, I'm going to do it, okay? <laughs> we're not conversing. What I think is hilarious about Ananias, though, is once he hears that this guy, that all these reports, of, once he hears he's going to suffer, then the next thing is, he wins. <laughs> like, I'm convinced. I'll be the, I'll be the agent. <laughs> you know, uh, wow. Okay, uh, so... Um, was there? Yes. I was just going to say with that conversation back and forth, you almost think, okay, this is common for them. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. To have conversation back and forth. Yes. 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 <laughs> Weren't afraid to question mm-hmm. and engage in a conversation. Um, that's, you know, that, that's just what's possible when. We open our eyes and open our minds uh, to what can be done. All right, Mark chapter 16, verse 15 through 20. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will (coughs) put their hands on sick people, and they will get well. After the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven, and he sat at the right hand of God. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere, and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. Wow. Amen. Thank you. Terry, what time do you need to break? Uh, Okay. All right. So what are we told? uh, What are we told will happen here regarding the Holy Spirit and signs? What, What are we told in this passage? I guess this is nobody want to say it. I think this is the part where we get really like, okay, really? Because he said a lot of stuff. Like you're gonna be able to do this, you're gonna be able to drink poison, you're gonna touch snakes, 
And the manifestation before we come into the kingdom, we've heard those things, right? Mm -hmm. So when we, some of us may even have seen those things in the religions that we were a part of before we came into the church and who God was, right? And we, we were told, hey, you can do these things. And we're like, nah, you crazy. <laughs> and then when we come into the a true knowledge of Christ and what he's doing for us, then we're skeptical because mm. we're shaped by our past religious activities and beliefs. So it's like, really? I'm going to go outside to the fire pit and there's a snake and I'm going to pick it up and it will not harm me. And you're like, no, that ain't true. So it's hard to reshape your mind, especially when you see this scripture, because I'm like, I don't like snakes, <laughs> you know, and if I see one, I, yeah, yeah, that's good, you yeah. know, um, but I'm not going to go and try to, to do anything right. with it. Now, right. he's not necessarily saying you go do this stuff, but he said you can do it. Yeah. And yeah. These people will do it. Yeah. But because we've seen religious fanatics. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. There's a reason why people talk about drinking Kool Aid. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we all remember that. Right. Yes. Right. Everybody's afraid that <laughs> Brother Edie will walk in with the, the snake coils around the arm <laughs> as he's doing the welcome or something. <laughs> all right. um, so, yeah. So, again, so what is promised to those who go and preach in this passage? <laughs> what is promised? For those that will go to preach the word, yes? They'll drive out demons. They'll drive out demons, okay? And, and it says these signs will what? Accompany. Accompany those who believe. Those who believe. And then it says they went out everywhere and preached, and the Lord confirmed the message by the sign. All right? So I just want to share a little bit uh, about this. I mean, my, my belief has always been, you know, that the word has been confirmed already, and um, therefore the, the signs, you know, have, have ceased. Anybody familiar with yeah. Yeah. that type of thought? Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, and there's other passages, there's passages that have, have come with that. Right. Um, anybody ever hear of the Renew Network? All right, some of us have heard the Renew Network. The Renew Network uh, started by a guy named Bobby Harrington, and it's a restoration. Um, it's a collaboration of restoration uh, churches. So ICOC, Traditional Church of Christ, Independent Christian Church. It's a collaboration of uh, ministers, leaders from these different groups to help one another make disciples. All right. So uh, a number of people from ICOC a part of starting this Renew Network. And um, so the initiative is just to work together to make disciples, to plant churches. Well, through the Renew Network, uh, there was a group, uh, let's just call them uh, DMM, it's Disciple Making Movements uh, that are connected with Renew. And uh, these, are, these are disciples, these are disciple makers. Uh, these are people that they do studies with people. Um, but the, the groups that I was exposed to or, or introduced to uh, are overseas, uh, you know, in dangerous areas where, I mean, they're breaking ground with the Holy Spirit, you know, with, when it comes to the church. They're going into Muslim areas. They're going to areas that are hostile towards Christianity, dangerous areas. They're going to places where magic arts are just out in the open um, and they're making disciples and they are. It, it's happening in miraculous ways. The first time I heard about this group. I prayed that God would expose them as liars because I could not believe what I was hearing. I mean, I, I heard everything in the book of Acts, like currently happening today. Um, I say everything. I mean, there was a point where I heard, I said, okay, I've heard everything except speaking in tongue, like speaking a language that you did not learn. I heard all of that. And then one day um, I heard a testimony about 
Some disciple makers were training uh, some locals. You know, they had learned a dialect so they could reach out to this community. They were training some guys over the phone. And they got to a point where they were like, okay, I think we're done training. And, you know, we're going to have like kind of our last, you know, John 15, you know, moment where it's like, hey, remain, you know, go. And they got on the phone and they could not communicate with each other. They couldn't understand each other. And they're trying to figure out why can't we understand each other right now? Uh, come to find out they were never speaking the same language. They were never speaking the same dialect the whole time. And they just concluded that the spirit was, you know, kind of a, a Google translate that was happening, so to speak, that, that they were not speaking the whole, the same language the entire time. And it was made evident when it was, when the training was over. So different things like that. Uh, I met a brother. He's a church of Christ theologian. Um, I mean, spent years preaching that this stuff doesn't happen. And he goes out there, spends a few months with this ministry. He comes back, not just with stories, but pictures. He came back saying, you know, I was the guy saying that these things don't happen anymore. And now I have to come back and reread my Bible. And he came back with pictures and names. Uh, like I said, I want you to think of the most extraordinary things that you read in the book of Acts. Uh, I'm telling you, all of them are scratched off the list. And that's why I prayed that God would expose these people if they were lying. Um, and uh, that's yet to happen because these things, like the book of Acts is still alive and well. We're still on this side of the resurrection. The What's different is these people are going into unreached areas. And what they are, what they are trying to reconcile is that after they evangelize an area, the signs start to drop. <clears throat> after the word is confirmed, they stop seeing some of these outward signs. Does that make sense? That's what they're, they're grappling with. And so, yeah, likely we're not going to see some of these things here where the word is just everywhere. But there is a daily relationship, there is a daily interaction that we can have with the Holy Spirit. We just have to open our minds. And really, we have to allow the scriptures to open our minds. It's not just being open to anything, but it's deciding that you're not going to be the one that says God doesn't do. God doesn't do this anymore. Why? Because you're looking at the word of God. And there's so many things that, you know, um, as, as I've gotten to know people from these disciple making movements, there's so many times where I am challenged because I will say, why do you do these things? Why do you do this particular practice? And they'll just point to the scriptures. They're like, because it's there. And you know, they haven't, you know, I haven't given them the opportunity to ask me, bro, why don't you do that? <laughs> you know, oh, you don't believe that that happens anymore? Like, because it's there. And uh, so I just realized that uh, myself, all of us, we have a high view of scripture, right? Would you guys agree? But it's just not high enough. It's just not high enough because we come up with a lot of reasons why. We still shouldn't do what the apostles did or what the other disciples did. We still have our reasons why that's out of date when the scriptures never say that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, what time is it? All right. Uh, I'm, actually, we're supposed to stop at 11 and do like a 15 minute break. But you guys can go to that break if you need to be that long. So okay. Yeah, All right. Okay. So, uh, any other responses? Yes. I was just going to say to your point, uh, it, it, it's easy for me if I feel guilty that I can't, I'm not drinking poison or handling things or whatever. And, you know, if I don't, I'm not doing these things, it's easy to say, well, my real, the real version of Mark ends verse 8. 
because of my little footnote, my Bible says the earliest manuscripts make 9 through 20 seem right. a little bit unreliable. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Until, <laughs> right, <laughs> uh, uh, until it happens. Uh, and, and I'm not encouraging anyone to just go after some snakes. <laughs> <laughs> You know, um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, even some of the the the, the most amazing te testimonies that I've heard, um, they 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 happen in an environment of humility, um, actually, kind of random acts of the spirit. It's not people just running into. You know, hospitals saying, "Okay, we're going to do this." It's not like that. It's just it's things that happen that are that are fairly random. So um, there's just a spirit of humility that comes with this when it's really done. When it's really done before God, it it doesn't. It, it shouldn't breed cockiness, you know, and being spiritual bullies in some way. Uh, yes, Kevin. Well, and, and I think that's true of humility. I think we all get very excited and interested in the kind of uh, cinematic moments in the scriptures when they do these big things. But that statement you just said is pretty profound that we come up with a lot of ways and reasons why we don't do what the apostles did. But that, that goes never which way. It's like we come, up, we come up with reasons why we don't cast out demons or, you know, play with saints. But we also come up with reasons why we don't. Uh, meet together daily. We come up with reasons why we don't pray and fast. Like we want the gaudy pieces of the Holy Spirit without the humble pieces. And in our society, like no wonder we don't get the big glorious parts because we come up with excuses not even to do the parts that are normal and we can do, but we're just too busy. Or uh, you know, it's not realistic in. The American society, you know, it's, you know, can people really get together every day? Can we really talk to each other? Can we really pray and fast often? So that, that spirit of humility you're talking about, like, we need that in the small areas if we ever want to see the big areas. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, <coughs> oh, who? Go on. I don't know about it. <laughs> I think you said earlier how many people that you said it's not like we need to come out of faith. We came out of mind that was like it's not really out of faith, but it's more like out of faith. Like I'm not weak, I don't think I have boundaries because that it doesn't happen, it can happen. But it's just that we don't even have the faith to really see that happen, conceptualize it. Like I think about Dr. Strange in this one part of the movie when he said, You've asked to see these things and it works, can you believe what I'm telling you? And I think sometimes disciples, it's like we can have this idea, we can look at it and say that's really cool then, but if you have a thing they're trying to think through like some of the miracles and it's like my brain was trying to like bring us to a reality with them that like it's it was cool here and I see the environment is there, but gonna bring it to reality so that it's still happening. It's like I feel like my face hits this ceiling of like I'm really believing it's like I want to get there, but this is gonna tear my head up. And so I think it's so much not that it's outdated, but our faith doesn't even or our lack of faith so that you really see at least be able to experience it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just kind of arrogant to say, if I haven't experienced it, then it's not real. Yeah. I mean, that's a key to <laughs> Thomas, right? Like, unless I, you know, unless I, I, I touch the wound, unless I, yeah. And um, we just, you know, we, we want to go past that. Yeah. I guess, as you know, I'm kind of always thinking about what you do for us, and. Um, one of the things I'm going to be praying about as we kind of process and, and take in the message that you're bringing is that we don't have a us focused question or mindset about the lesson. It's not about how about me and what I'm doing and what that that the the mind opening part ought to be look. God is on the move, and the Spirit is on the move, and God can and does do amazing things. And I need to not maybe focus so much on me and 
and is God is God on my team as much as am I God's team? And am I doing am I living in the spirit and trying to keep up with God mm-hmm. instead of a, a I don't know if this is making sense, but not a me focused kind of a yeah. processing of this lesson. Yeah. Right, because even in that, it talks about what is it, science and sorcerer who wanted the power because he wanted to do the magic. He wanted to do the miraculous right. signs. So, if, you know, God's power, God's, the miracles were never done to show up or to bring to right. us. Right. So, we have to think what's the need of the hour right now? If the need of the hour was for some reason me to pick up this thing, then I'm sure the spirit would, would do that. And so maybe not the need of the hour right now. Right. But I certainly wouldn't want to draw attention to me right. being able to be upset. <laughs> right. And, and all these things were to confirm the word right. to people. That were not believed. That's right. That's right. These, 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 you know, the 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 highlight reels of the Holy Spirit. It's always in that context. Yeah. Um, now we're gonna in the next section we're gonna talk about just some daily miraculous uh, interactions that we can have uh, daily, you know, supernatural um, experiences that we can have with the Holy Spirit just to help you on your day to day. But these things, you know, that happen in the book of Acts that are still happening today, uh, they're mostly happening in some extreme evangelistic situations where it's like, all right, if all the spirits are out, then uh, the Holy Spirit's like, all right, well, let me show you what I do. And, uh, you know, so if, if we want to be a part of that type of ministry, we just, we're likely going to have to move and go to some extreme situations. Um, or we can just pray for those that are in those situations and, and preach the word here. People we, people need the, the gospel here. So uh, so let's go ahead and break right now. Uh, you said until 1115? Uh, yeah, 1110. Okay, 1110? Alright, so let's break for seven minutes. Alright, and then we'll come back. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>